I've been thinking about doing a video about this uh, statements by the Vatican about uh, gays and remarriage. I've been thinking about doing a video for a while about it, so I've decided today is the day. Um, what, what we've seen, according to these brief little articles, is they put out a statement and ask the pastors to recognize, among other things, the, quote, positive aspects of civil unions and cohabitation, unquote. This was called by Francis, Pope Francis, to discuss the issues related to the family in contemporary society. In this report, it says, this is, the, this is their words of the article, appeared to reflect the more tolerant and inclusive direction Francis has sought to take the church since he was chosen to succeed the four more, far more, doctrinaire Benedict. So these, this these little tiny words here are, are quite telling to me to be more tolerant and inclusive. Now, the gathering is unlikely to change the church doctrine. <clears throat> A more merciful approach towards the faithful who stray from the Catholic ideal citing the need for courageous pastoral choices to reflect the current plurality of relationships outside the traditional family model. And they urge the pastors, for instance, to be more welcoming to gays who have gifts and qualities to offer the, to the Christian community. And then I'm, they ask to treat divorced Catholics who have remarried civilly with respect because... Divorce is um, definitely frowned upon in the Catholic Church. Well, have you heard the old saying, maybe it's not that old, but don't hate the player, hate the game? Well, what I think uh, is that the doors of heaven, the gates of heaven, the entry to heaven, the gift of salvation, the price that Jesus paid on the cross for all of us, for all of our sins, can be claimed by everyone and entry into the kingdom of God can come for everyone. But not if you're living a lifestyle of immorality in direct opposition to what God has said not to do. So, my thoughts are tolerance. I don't think we can be more tolerant of the sin. You understand my meaning? There's too much tolerance and political correctness and stuff going on today. That's part of our problem. That's part of part of the reason everything is breaking down in, in certain areas of our society. you got to get them in the door to help save their souls. I agree on that. But you have to explain to the people and get them to understand what is the ramification of what you're doing. What is the price? What is the punishment and the price that you will have to pay and suffer for continuing to, to do this thing? Now, if, if they're going to do that, 
then this would be a good thing. Because you can't save a soul if you can't get them through the door to listen to what God says. Now, if they're not going to, if they're not going to bring anything up to them about the price and the penalty and how you can't live a lifestyle like that in in God's eyes, then it's going to do no good to to have them go to church. It's just, it's going to pervert the word actually. And then we had another article that came out later on after that. There was some, apparently some hubbub about it. And then they released a new translation and significantly altered the section about gays, diminishing the welcoming tone from the original Italian. The original text contained a whole section called Welcoming Homosexuals that asked the church to provide gays a fraternal space and said their unions constitute precious support for the partners. The new version, providing for homosexual persons, speaks only of fellowship and valuable support. So, they tried to reword it so that they would deflect um, all the flack they were getting. Um, this little book here, have you ever read Jude? It's not that long, but it says quite a few things in it. And what Jude goes on to talk about is he says, he gave all diligence to write unto the common write unto you of the common salvation is needful, needful for him to write unto you and exhort you so that you earnestly contend for the faith which was once delivered unto the saints. For there are certain men who crept in unawares who were before of old ordained to this condemnation. Ungodly men turning the grace of our God into lasciviousness and denying the only Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ. I will therefore put you in remembrance, though you once knew this, how that the Lord, having saved the people out of the land of Egypt afterward, destroyed them that believed not. And even he says, And the angels would kept not their first estate, but left their own habitation. He has reserved in everlasting chains unto, under darkness unto the judgment of the great day. Even as Sodom and Gomorrah and the cities about them, in like manner, giving themselves over to fornication and going after the strange flesh, are set forth for an example, suffering the vengeance of eternal fire. So, concentrating on this little part here, even Jude himself writes and gives an example of Sodom and Gomorrah who gave themselves over to fornication and went after strange flesh, and they got punished for it. So he's talking about all kinds of um, sexual immorality, perversion, homosexuality, uh, bestiality, you know, all those nasty things that God cannot stand. Well, there's more there in, in Jude, if you want to continue to read that. It's, it's quite a nice little writing, I think. And it's plainly stated. It's not like God didn't tell people what they shouldn't do to live clean and have clean robes. You want your robe to be clean. You don't want your robe to be dirty. Dirty robe is, is means covered in sin. Clean robe means that you you have repented of your sin and it's all been forgiven and stuff. Well, he, he plainly says, you will not lie with mankind as with womankind. It is abomination. You have other, you know, it's either abomination or, or detestable or disgusting. Abomination, 
abomination, abomination, disgusting, abomination, abomination, detestable, abomination, abomination. It says the same thing. Don't do it. You're not supposed to. It goes against the natural order of the creation. And that is why he made Eve, because it wasn't good for Adam to be alone. And it was more pleasing to the Lord for him to have a lady, a woman, a wife. In the greater big picture, that made things even more perfect. You can have families in. So, you have the prophecy of St. Francis, who this Pope drew his Pope name from. And in the end of it, you see that in a certain time, Christ sends him not a true pastor, but a, a destroyer. Is Francis the destroyer? Well, you can't say it's not so it's a possibility but even upon this prophecy here we can read upon it there'll be such diversity of opinion and schism among the people the religious and the clergy that except those days were shortened according to the words of the gospel even the elect would be led into error when they're not specifically guided amid amid such confusion by the immense mercy of God. So are we in those times? Well, if we're not, we're close. I haven't seen the day get shorter, though. Not dramatically shorter. Maybe milliseconds. I'm thinking about um, speaking about the rapture in the next video. And we have opinions of pre-tribulation, mid-tribulation. But I think from what I'm reading, what I'm thinking, that it may not, I uh, hope I don't offend those, we believe pre-tribulation, but it may not be pre-tribulation, folks. Um, we, we read about two resurrections, and that's what I think I'm going to do my next video on, is those two resurrections and how the first resurrection possibly uh, is the actual rapture. So, my point was, is that I wanted to, to speak about, um, you know, don't hate the player, hate the game, hate the sin, don't hate the person, hate on the person. Open the doors and give them the opportunity to change, because everybody can change if they want it. And salvation can be claimed if they want to do what has to be done to claim it. You have to turn away from the sin, but they have to be. This church has, has got to teach them that what they're doing is wrong, and they have to accept what they've done is wrong. And they have to be sorry for it, and they have to turn away from it. And if they are not, it's not going to do them any good to go to church because they'll still be washing themselves in sin and staying in sin, just not getting out of it. And the punishment for that is very severe. So those are my thoughts upon this statement.